always start, oh, see? I was just saying, I always start these making some silly face or in the middle of a sentence, and that's exactly what I just did yet again. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Ask Authors Anything, the YA middle grade Q&A web series devoted to famous writers, favorite books, and fangirling. Hi. I'm Megan McCafferty, and this is when I usually say something like, you don't need to know anything more about me because this is not about me. It's about my fantastic guest, only today it is all about me because it's my show. And um, I'm, I really wanted to celebrate the publication of my 10th book, Jessica Darling's It List 2, which is today. Thank you. And I wanted to celebrate it by doing this special episode all about me. So it would be a little weird for me to ask questions um, to myself. So that's why I recruited uh, one of my favorite fellow Jersey Girl writers to join me today. She is the New York Times bestselling author of 15 novels for young people, including The Candy Makers, A Mango Shaped Space, The Twice Upon a Time Retellings of Famous uh, Fairy Tales, The Willow Falls Birthday Books, and so many others. Um, her work has been translated into 14 languages, Wendy? Have you lost track? <laughs> a little bit. Um, and she's, you've, she's been nominated for 74 state book awards, or who knows, maybe you even got a nomination yesterday. Maybe you're up to 75 at this point. Who knows? And when, when she gets the question, hey, will any of your books get the Hollywood treatment? She can actually say yes, unlike me, um, because her book, uh, Jer Jeremy Fink and the Meaning of Life, was made into a movie in 2011. Her latest book, Pie in the Sky, mixes fun and astrophysics and made me wonder what the heck her creative brain could possibly come up with next. So please welcome to the show my friend, Wendy Mass. And Wendy's co-hosts for today are from John Witherspoon Middle School in Princeton, New Jersey. Give yourself a hand, girls. It's so great to see you today. So, all right, now it's time for me to, um, to step back and let Wendy take over the show. Wow. Hey, guys. <laughs> Um, big cyber hug to you, Megan. Yay. Even though we're in New Jersey, we're still far enough away not to be able to hug in person. Um, I am very honored and excited that you asked me to do the interviewing for this. Um, I'm excited that you're on the hot seat and, and not me, which is much more fun. Um, well, more fun for me because the hot seat, you know, hot. Yeah. Here. But you'll have fun, and you're I'm awesome. I'm nervous. So, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> so um, Megan, for I'm sure all of you guys know who she is, but she's you know a real YA superstar, and she's she's you know sold over a million books, and she's awesome and published all over the world. Um, the Jessica Darling series, which she's continuing um, as a sort of prequel to her amazingly um, fantastic and successful older Jessica Darling books that started with Sloppy First. And you know how sometimes where you know, you're in the bookstore and you don't really know what you're going in there for, you know there's just some special book waiting for you? So that's how it was for me when I first went in, it was like August 2001 maybe, and um, I was in the bookstore looking for a book, and this book with this hot pink cover <laughs> jumped out at me, and it was the first um, Jessica Darling book called Sloppy First. And you know how sometimes you can get home with a book and like leave it on your shelf for a year and not really get around to it? And then sometimes you get home with a book and you like stop everything else you're doing in your life and you read that book and do nothing else? Well, that's how it was for me um, with, with, with Sloppy First. And I just remember sitting there and thinking, like, this is a brilliant new voice in, in YA literature. And I hadn't even gotten my first acceptance letter for, for any of my books. I had no writing career yet except somebody who really wanted to do this. And when I read Megan's book, I just you know, was so taken with it and fell in love with the voice and thought it was so funny and clever. And I, I love how, how it's continued in this, this younger series. And now all of you guys get to start off with Jessica now. And then when you get older, visit her again later. So um, 
the fact that Megan and I got to be friends over the years is really is really special to me. And I hope oh, I'm not embarrassing <laughs> Maybe blushing a little. But um but so thanks for having me and I am excited to hear your insights and your secrets and and the kids came up with some great questions for you and with some questions from your Facebook fans too. So let's get started. Yay! Okay. Our first question is from Kiara. Take it away. Did you base Jessica on yourself? How was your middle school experience compared to Jessica's? Better or worse? Oh boy. Um. Well, Jessica, you know, in a way, all my characters have me in them, right? Because they came from here and from here, and so even the characters I hate are part of me. Um, but Jessica has a, and I definitely have a lot in common. Um, you know, you can look and say, okay, she ran cross country, runs cross country, I ran cross country, she's a writer, I'm a writer. Um, but these books are definitely not autobiographies. Like, if I wrote a book about my middle school years the way they actually happened, it would be really, really boring, okay? Um, the truth is, well, this is, I always say I start out with the truth and then I start lying my butt off. Because that's the beauty of fiction, right? So you can start with experiences that, you know, I certainly know what it's like to um, show up at school and have my friends be mad at me for reasons that I don't understand. I definitely know what it's like to have crushes on boys who don't like me back. I know what it's like for to think that my parents have no clue where I'm coming from. You know, all the things that Jessica experiences. But I experience them in different ways. I wish that I'd had Jessica's resilience. I wish that I'd had Jessica's sense of humor. And I think that in many ways she's living the middle school life the way that I, even when she like literally falls on her face in that first book, she's able to kind of laugh at herself and come back from it. And I certainly struggled with that when I was in middle school. Um, you know what, then a follow-up to that one from Maritza. You had a good question about um, about Megan's family situation and where she might have gotten some influences from. Yeah. Um, did you ever get good or bad advice from your older siblings? You know, what's uh, some people find it interesting. I don't have a sister. I have two brothers, and one is four years older than me, and one is four years younger than me. And so we never attended high school or middle school or college at the same time. So we we're always like when one sibling was like moving out of one life stage, another one was moving in. And so we kind of ignored each other. Like when we weren't fighting over the phone, like we pretty much didn't have much to do with each other. But um, I remember my older brother trying to uh, warn me to, when, when I was starting middle school and he was going into high school, he, was warn he tried to warn me to stay away from boys, which really wasn't a problem because the boys were staying away from me. So um, I didn't have to worry about that. Um, so that's really, I can't really remember any other advice that I had. And I think that the reason that I find I created a sister character for Jessica is because part of me always wished that I had a sister and I imagine what, what that would be like to have the type of sister um, who would dispense advice and so sometimes in fiction you find yourself living the life that the what if life and I certainly did that with the relationship between uh, Jessica and Bethany. This is all really fascinating. <laughs> I'm so excited to get to hear all this, this insight. This is great. Um, Tally, do you want to ask the next question? Your books have helped me understand more about middle school and friendship. How do you think this world is a better place because of your books? Oh my god. <laughs> what a question. Um, wow. Um, you know, I, I never, I, I don't write my books thinking that they're going to change the world. I don't know, I think that that's kind of a, that's a very ambitious, like, I'm going to change the world. It's very, like, you know, egotistical to think that. Um, my goals for writing my books are actually, and my 
opinion, pretty modest in that I write the types of books that I wish that I had had when I was your age or that I wish that I'd had when I was in high school. And when a reader like you, Tally, or anyone says to me, hey, your books helped me understand myself better or helped me get through a miserable period in school or, you know, made me laugh on a day that I was having a really, really bad day. You know, these are huge things, but they're, but they're significant to you, to the reader. And that is changing the world in a small way. And to me, that's one of the greatest benefits and joys of being a writer. So um, that's, I mean, what, what, Wendy, like, what could you hear that's better than that from a, from a reader, right? Like, there's nothing better. No, yeah, that's you know. totally. If someone tells you that you know they they let they closed the last page and, and left your book feeling changed in some way or their mind open to something new, you totally that's it. Done the job. You know, yeah. great. Okay, um, Shoshi with number three. What made you realize that you could write a book and publish it? <laughs> I'm laughing because. Uh, Wendy, maybe you can relate to this. There are times when I still wonder if I can write a book and publish it. Um, um, you know, so I've been telling stories my whole life. Like, I, I started making up stories pretty much when I learned how to talk, and I started writing them down shortly thereafter. And writing really was like my first hobby, my first and only hobby that I ever stuck with. I used to, I'm a really bad hobbyist. I'm not good at sticking to hobbies, like, whether it was ice skating or Girl Scouts or like I always kind of was a quitter when but reading and writing are the two hobbies that I've stuck with and so part of me thought I always had ideas like well one day I'll write a book but I saw that as something that people who did when they were like older like that was and so I never said like oh I'm going to I, I'm, I'm going to write a book you know, by the time I'm 25 or 30, it was just something that was kind of out there. And it wasn't until I, I, um, I was actually, a I worked in magazines before I became an author. And so that was my day job. I worked as a magazine editor and writer, but I took a class at night um, in fiction writing just to kind of, just for fun, really. And in that class, I started writing all these stories about growing up in New Jersey. These kind of, these stories that were centered around high school and um, the students in the class all started asking me, you know, why isn't this a book? Have you, ever, have you ever thought about turning this into a book? This would be a great book. And I was like, really? Like, are these silly stories about growing up and working on the boardwalk and going to the beach and, and boys not liking me? And, the, and I kept on hearing that over and over and over again. And I thought, well, maybe they know what they're talking about. And, um... It gave me the encouragement to try, and so I just did. I was like, let's see if I can turn this into a book, and um, after a few years and hard work, um, the, that ended up being the, the beginning of my first novel. Um, I, when I said earlier, when I started answering this question about my doubts that sometimes I could even write my next book, I say that because like, I have a book, I have an idea for a book right now that scares me a lot and I don't know if I can write it I really don't know if I'm the writer for it um, and the only way I'm gonna know is if I try and so if you're interested in writing um, you have to be willing to fail you have to be willing right Wendy it's like you have to if you're gonna try something you have to be willing to fail because even in that failure, something will come out of it. Um, and so I'm going to just try to write this thing that scares me, and maybe it'll get published. Uh, maybe it'll just sit on my laptop. Um, maybe it'll just be a, a fun experiment. But um, I won't know unless I put the effort in and see for myself. Um, you know what? I'm going to skip around then, because that leads into a really good question from Elizabeth. Elizabeth, do you want to jump in? Oh, wait, is Elizabeth not there? Oh, she's right. there. Lily, you're taking over for Elizabeth today, right? 
What writing advice would you give to students? Can you give us tips that will make writing easier? Okay, so writing advice. The advice that I always give aspiring writers, and you're probably, you've probably heard this, so you're probably like, oh, boring. First of all, read, 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 read as much as you can. Read all different types of things because the way you learn how stories work is by reading, okay? And then the other part of that is you have to write. You actually have to do put the work in and write. Now, I'm not one of those people who says, oh, you have to write every single day. You know, some people are like, oh, if you, you know, because that used to intimidate me. When I used to hear people say, oh, you have to put in at least two hours of writing time every day. Or you're not a real writer. And I'm like, I don't put in two hours of writing time every day. Like, that, like somebody going to tell on me? Like, you know, I do think, though, it's like any other skill that, the more you do it, the better you get at it. So if you want to be a writer, you actually have to put your, it's like, Wendy, it's like butt in chair, right? Wendy, it's like you got to put your butt in the chair and write. Because you'd be surprised how many aspiring writers spend more time talking about writing than actually writing. Because it's easier. It's easier to talk about the books and the stories that you want to write. It's hard to actually do it. Um, and though you didn't specifically ask about writer's block, that's I get I get a lot of questions about writer's block, and for me, um, writer's block t tends to be one of two things. It's either I have so much going on in my brain, and it's just all chaos, and I don't know what part of the chaos to to separate out from the rest of it and actually put to paper. Or the other part of writer's block comes to me is when I am just stuck because I have no idea what's happening with the story anymore. Like, where am I in this? And it's usually because I haven't thought things out clearly enough. Sometimes it's because I'm bored. Do you guys ever get bored? I don't know how many of you are writers, but you ever find yourself just like in the middle of it and be like, I don't care. I don't like you. Well, the thing is, if you don't care what's happening in your story, Nobody else is going to care. Like, how can you expect anybody else to care about your characters if you really don't? So, you know, if you find yourself bored in the middle of your boring story, that's a story that you got you got to get rid of. Like, that's not a story worth trying to tell. So, um, you know, I think that you should go with the story that is most um, exciting to you at that time. You know, like, and maybe you don't have a start to your story. Maybe you only know the end, or maybe you have a scene that's like somewhere in the middle. That's what revising and editing is all about, guys. So like, just kind of tell it as you feel it, and then put the parts together later to make it work. And Lily, you had another question? What is your favorite book and author? <sighs> My favorite book and author. Well, um, my favorite book, or the book that I've read more than any other book, and you guys are going to read it. I don't know if you read it in middle school, probably, is The Catcher in the Rye. Is The Catcher in the Rye in on the, uh, well, okay, but I don't know. Anyway, you, you'll read it it's eventually. It's like everybody reads this book in school, and it's kind of become this thing like everybody reads Catcher in the Rye. I loved it. I read it when I was in sixth grade, probably, which might be a little young to read Catcher in the Rye, but it was like, boom. it was like I've never read a character like that, like Wendy, you were saying earlier, like, you know, went about my book, which was so nice for you to say. <laughs> like, when Wendy was going on about how fantastic my book was earlier. Um, but when I read The Catcher in the Rye, the character Holden Caulfield spoke to me because he's, like, kind of crazy. No, he is crazy. And there was something in that craziness that made me feel less alone in the world. Like, I thought, oh, wow, I'm not the only one who kind of hates his friends. Like, I'm not the only one who, you know, has these weird thoughts. Um, so it made me feel like, oh, okay, like, it's going to be okay. Um, I also was a huge, huge huge fan of Judy Bloom. Like, I read all of her books, and she definitely has had a profound impact on, on the stories that I tell. Um, so, uh, yeah, and then I read, also went through a phase, and here's the thing, 
You know, I think sometimes fun books get a lot of, you know, you're, you're told like you have to read just like important books or serious books and you know sometimes like whether you, you maybe you like to like love to read graphic novels maybe you just love to read romances whatever like I think that there should be room for books that are simply fun and so like I this the books that I love probably more than any books when I was your age were these books called the Sweet Valley High books Wendy did you read the Sweet Valley High books? No I managed to avoid Sweet Valley High ah! They were, I mean, they're ridiculous books. They're totally ridiculous. They're about these identical twins in California who drive, like, awesome cars. And, like, they, it's just all, it's completely silly stuff. But I loved those books so much. And I couldn't wait to, like, go to the bookstore and get the new one every month. So, um, and I'm okay. Like, and then I went on to, like, more, you know, serious literature. So I think it all balanced out in the end. No, that's funny because I was, I'm a few years older than Megan, and I was work. I was a teenager working in a bookstore selling a lot of Sweet Valley High books, and you could have been one of those kids coming in and, um, and buying one, grabbing them off the shelves. It's always a great job for anyone who wants to be a writer. Um, be around books, work in bookstores and libraries and, and volunteer anywhere you can that, that has something to do with, with books. Um, Keep bookstores and libraries alive, please. We need um, you. Okay, Julia. Um, what inspires you writing? Do you listen to special music or you sit in a special place when you are writing? That is a great question because it, you know, writing is my job now, right? So when writing wasn't my job and I was writing just for fun, I could write whenever I wanted to, like at any time. And like some, you know, some some periods I would write every day. Sometimes I wouldn't write for a while. Um, it was very unstructured because it wasn't my job. Now that writing is my job, I have to be, you know, you, you can't just wait for inspiration to strike. Like you have to. Um, be disciplined enough to, you know, again, put your butt in the chair and do the work. Um, for me, I need, I can't write if anybody else is in the house. I just can't. Like, I, I even if they're being quiet and not bothering me and they're in the gaming dojo and they're, like, doing their own thing and, you know, like, I cannot write if anybody, it's just their very presence in the house is a distraction to me. So, uh, whereas I have other friends who love being surrounded by people. They go to coffee shops or they work in writer's groups because they love being around other people. So, um, I need to be alone. Uh, I always listen to music when I'm writing. Always. Like, it just, it, I feel like it kind of keeps me company, like, because I've banished everybody else from the house, and so music is, and I love music, so I find that, I can listen to music that can kind of set the tone for this, the scene that I'm writing. Um, and I also have to have, for some reason, I'm always afraid that I'm going to, like, it's like I'm going to get dehydrated while I'm writing. I usually have at least two, sometimes three different beverages surrounding me at once. Like, it's usually water, tea, and then I usually sometimes even have a backup tea just in case. Like it's weird. I don't know. But I like I'm always afraid I'm gonna get really thirsty. Like when I'm like I'm running a marathon or something, which sometimes writing feels like running a marathon. So um, but that's it. Those are my that they're not that's not that weird. I mean, some people have writing rituals where they can only write like with you know certain pen or, or they or they're like or they follow certain do you have any weird writing rituals, Wendy? You know, I used to when I was younger, starting out, I'd have this hat. It was this old, like, Indiana Jones type of hat. You know, I was going to say, there's people who put on costumes and stuff for their writing. And you're one of, the, you're one of those weirdos. Yeah, no, I, I used to have to have the hat. Um, I used to have a lot more rules. Now, like, once I had kids, I mean, I could work in the middle of an amusement park with, like, chaos. Um, so I'm fine with that. Although I do want to know what a gaming dojo is. It's the it's where the boys are, you know, that's their gaming room. They go in there and I don't know what happens in there. I don't know. I don't know what goes on in the gaming dojo. I don't know what they're playing. So I just hear them yelling at each other and talking smack. This is my husband and my son I'm talking about. They're yeah. usually in there just talking trash and I but I don't I don't set foot. Martial arts. In the in the gaming dojo. Yeah. Anyway. Um. 
very, very funny. Um, Sophia. Do you keep a writing journal, and could we see it? Um, I do. And where is it? Hold on. <laughs> so exciting. Uh, where is it? Oh, there it is. I'm back. I do. So this is it. So I have about I have a few dozen dozen of these actually, and um, I don't I don't write. Um, like, I don't write uh, drafts in my writing journal. Like, none of the actual, um, that is all on the laptop for me. All, like, the actual writing of the story, I always write on a computer because I edit so much as I go along. And, but for me, the writing notebook is, re is really about jotting down ideas. Um, and, and just as they pop into my head. I found, though, I now am using a lot more of my phone I'm usually, I, because I, my phone, this kind of, I used to carry around a notebook like this all the time, I mean, for years, like, for, this is, I was, I would always have one of these notebooks in my bag, and that's why it's kind of, it's bent, because I was rolling it up to fit it in my bag. Um, but then once I got a smartphone, um, I use the Notes app on my smartphone now, and so if something comes up, I can just, like, oh, okay, I have to remember that, do, 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 do. So I, I now, I always have something a means to jot down whatever ideas pop into my head because I have a lot going on in my life and I'm afraid that if I don't write it down immediately I'll lose it. So, but like sometimes, I mean, these, I look back here and um, I, my, my notes don't make any sense at all. <laughs> at all. Like in this one, um, Oh, like for, the, for this page. So in It List 2, which you guys haven't read, I know that there's there's a select few of you in the audience over there who have read It List 2. But uh, there, there's a... There, the decision to do a, a group Halloween costume is a big part of It List 2. And um, I was trying... I was playing with different ideas of what the Halloween costumes could be. And at one point I thought I was going to call them the Manga Girls. But then I ended up calling them the Chibi Girls, which I liked better because it sounds better. But anyway, that's what this page is about. Anyway, so here's my writer's notebook. It makes sense to only me, and then even sometimes it doesn't even make sense to me. Often it gets weird when I'll wake up um, and I'll find that I've written. I used to write, find myself that I'd written down things like in a semi-asleep state, like, and I'd be like, "Can you can you translate this?" It says asparagus. <laughs> Bubble man, like what is what is that? Like what? I, I it's like that. No sense. Anyway, so that would happen to me a lot, where I couldn't translate whatever genius thoughts I had the night before. That's very funny. Um, we only have a few questions left, so I'm gonna go through these quickly. Um, Carolyn. Okay. Um, what were you like in middle school, and do you have any truths that you learned in middle school? What was I like in middle school? I feel like I should get my mo call up my mom <laughs> and have her answer this question, and she would probably tell you that I was very moody in <laughs> middle school and not very nice to her. Um, I was very um, an awkward time in middle school. Middle school was a really awkward time for me. I mean, I think it's an awkward time for a lot of people, but particularly for me because um, sort of like Jessica, um, when I got to middle school, there was no one from my elementary school in any of my classes. I was in like the honors. They had an honors classes in my middle school, and there was nobody from my elementary school in my classes. So I was going in with li like no friends. And so that made me really desperate to, like, I wanted, like, a click. I wanted to have my people around me. And so I tried really hard to, like, kind of make, create a click. And as I think probably all of you know, like, when you try really hard to do something like that, you just come across as really sad and desperate. Um, so that was sad. But then, but then the flip that on the good side is that I eventually... Um, ended up making a friend um, with a girl who had a, a fantastic sense of humor who was also very interested in writing like I was. And um, 
she became probably the best friend I have ever had in my life. And she ended up inspiring the Hope character in the Jessica Darling series. And my friendship with her um, absolutely changed my life. And that the development of my friendship with her was definitely the high point of my middle school years. And so when I look back on my fondest, fondest time from that period, I, it always inevitably um, involves her. And I think that's why I was so drawn to write about friendship and the importance of friendship with this second It List book because I know how important those friendships are, not just in middle school, but throughout your life. Um, Emily, what happens to Jessica in the new book? So the new book, which you're, so it's weird when you say the new book, because the new book is this book, which just came out today. But you know what's, what's weird is that I've already written a third book, right? So for me, the new book is the third book. Like, I've already, like, moved on. I'm like, so I was like, I had to remind myself, like, oh, what happens in this book? Like, because I wrote them all kind of quickly. So um, this book is, well, it's called The Totally Not Guaranteed Guide to Friends, Foes, and Faux Friends. So as, as I've said, it deals mostly with friendship. And, um, and so Jessica tries to kind of, like, uh, establish her place in her clique by um, throwing a slumber party, which suddenly becomes, she gets the pressure that it not, it, it's not just a slumber party. It has to be the most epic sleepover ever. And so she's not really much of a party person, and so she ends up having to she turn to her very, very social, awesome grandmother awesome. for help. Um, and uh, there's also um, drama around Halloween and Halloween costumes. Um, and um, there's a boy drama that starts happening. There's a boy who... Um, are you hearing me double? Are you hearing me double? Okay, it's just me. Okay. Just me. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, a lot of stuff. It's, 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 you know, she's dealing with friendships dealing and her family and family and in middle school, and she does a lot of sense of, lot of, sense of, of great, sense of, great sense of humor, humor and, and, and hoping it'll make you laugh. Yeah. Make you laugh. Yeah. yeah, I can vouch for that, having gotten a sneak peek at it. I know you guys are going to love it. We have time for one last question, I hope. Brenda? Yeah. Um, the cover for you. The cover for you. Um, I did not. I did not. I have actually. I have very actually. Very 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 other very my other um, but what's cool um, is that what's cool is that my publisher, publisher can ask me what what what, what, what kind of cover I would like. Cover I would like. So I when I saw it, that's Jessica. She um she she. It totally embodies what I wanted this book to be. It looks fun. It looks fresh. Um, and I'm really excited to see what the food cover is going to be because I haven't seen it yet. So hopefully it'll be just as good as you. Well, I'm, I'm sorry that we didn't get to the Facebook questions. So hopefully Megan will answer those um, on Facebook. I think Megan, Megan, are you muted? Can you guys hear Megan? No. No. no, no, no. Okay, there you are. You're back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Back. No, I didn't miss anything. I didn't, I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what I do want to say is that I just thank you so much for celebrating my publication day. Publication day. Like. This, it, this, I couldn't think of a better way to say it. So, and your questions so, are great. Your questions are great. Thank you. Give yourself a round of applause. Um, I'm happy to say, as I mentioned to say earlier, that both Wednesday, 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 Wednesday I will be at the be Princeton at Children's Book Festival this Saturday, Saturday the 20th, from 20th from 20th to 4th. So if you have so if you questions, have questions or, um, or um, get an autograph, autograph, or in my case, I'll my case, I'll like fresh salt water toffee. It's so always good to bribe. Just come by and say hi. Say hi. So come by and say hi. Please come by and say hi. Um, also, um, also, I will be back. I will be back. 
to my hosting my hosting this Friday. This Friday. I'm, doing two, I'm doing two. Uh, I'll be back on Friday. Uh, I'll be back on Friday. Debut, debut author, author Annie McGovern, McGovern, whose book, whose book, Say What You Will, came out just a few months. Ago, and it totally deserving totally of all the reviews. Starred review. Awesome praise that it's gotten since it came out. So please, so, if you're interested, watch that show on Friday. So, um, whenever I see you again, until I see you again, until I see you again, keep turning the pages or swiping the screen, whatever and however you read, just be reading. Because readers like to know why and I do what we do. We care about you doing what we do. Thank you so much for joining us today. Bye! 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 Bye!